right, this JPEG the raw photo review number 26. And we're moving now into the March images, AD. We have, for March, we have uh, two themes, one in the beginner group, one in the, the regular group that we'll talk about here in just a second. Before we do that, let me show, you know, what, if you want to uh, enter, how you would enter. So it's really easy. Go to jpedderaw.com slash contest. You can enter right there from our website. There's a link both to the regular group and to the beginners group. The theme for May is open. We're going to do we're going to do open for a while. I'll talk about that when we talk about the themes here. But um, the theme for May is open. And if you are on Facebook, and I know some of you still are on Facebook, uh, if you're on Facebook, then the, you just go to one of those groups, the beginner group or to the regulars group, and the album will be posted at the top of the, the, um, the group. If you're doing it from a phone, I have noticed it's not as obvious. That pin post from a phone is they minimize it, and it's sometimes it's easy to overlook. So if you don't see it and you're on your phone, that's why. Look for that pen to post. If you're on your desktop, it's, or maybe or maybe a tablet, I'm not sure on tablet, but if you're on your desktop for sure, or your laptop, you will you should see it at the, at the top of the thing. Um, so anyway, so for, for this month, for March, the one we're reviewing right now, the mm -hmm. theme for the beginners group was outdoors. And remember, you can interpret these any way you want to. Sure. Um, and the theme for the regular group was dream, which I think might've been a little harder than people anticipated people. <laughs> that one got the, the way we chose that is people, we put it up for a vote and mm -hmm. it got the most votes. So, cause I think it sounds cool, but as some of them realized later on, it was a little bit harder to do to, to actually make a photo to, to portray that. So keep cool. those two themes in mind as we go through it. So, Mike, I want to just throw this out there real yeah. quick. Um, this is not rehearsed, obviously. Um, we're just – we kind of – Mike and I get together like, what, four, four minutes before the show starts? <laughs> Sometimes I don't even show up. It's really crazy. Um, like last Hey, week, life goes on. <laughs> life, Yeah, life has been going on, let me tell you. Um, no, um, we don't rehearse this. So I just have a question for yeah. you because I'm curious. Um, so when I was in the Arcanum, one of the things that my apprentices loved were these photo challenges. Um, and I would do something more than a theme, though. Sometimes I would give them like a black and white challenge and I would require them to go and photograph something. So we had a baseline comparison. So I would say, um, let's say, go photograph architecture in black and white. And then I would let and see what everybody came up with instead of just a theme. Here's here's what I'd like to propose. And. Feel free to be, because you're the master of this realm, um, feel free to say, hey, no way. Um, but I, if you guys ever want this, and you can put this out there for vote too as well, I would love to know feedback from everybody out there. But would you like it if I set some themes? Like if I gave you challenges. Instead of a theme, I gave you a challenge. Like here's your photo challenge for the month. Um, I just wonder sometimes if um, maybe we had a photo challenge category that yeah, it might give people like a incentive, like oh, I never thought of trying to do that, or uh, you know, I would try to enter that photo contest that maybe AD gives me something that I'm I'm not used to photographing, um, and you force yourself to do it, which opens up a whole bunch of more creativity. I would like to know that, and and you know, if it's up to you, Mike, if you want to put it out there in the group and ask people if they're interested in that, I yeah, would be more than will. happy to come up with some challenges. Uh, for everybody. Um, and, you know, I can do like a little outline thing for you. Um, so we're, I'm getting settled now. This is, we just did the final trip. Uh, we, yesterday, so I could do this show, we made the final trip. We did two trips back to the old house and back with the trailer and then dropped off the trailer <laughs> last night. We finished up around, uh, we started at 9 a.m. and we finished at around 10.40 uh, PM last night. Yeah. Moving is, is a lot of work. Yeah. And yeah. so we had done that. Um, we did like the previous week. The reason why I was, uh, uh, MIA was basically, uh, we had worked Saturday and Sunday and I was just so spent. I mean, my brain was not, I mean, I was literally falling asleep. Um, so I am though now to the point where we are now 
fixed in our location. So the only work I'll be doing is here at this house and I won't be uh, making these huge uh, moving trips. So I'll have a little bit more time to put into this sort of thing. And I, and I would love to, uh, you know, and I didn't help you. Out there. I didn't help you by giving you a reminder until it was almost too late. <laughs> That's okay. We'll, so we'll sort all we'll, that we'll out. We'll work on that the back out end, better. But yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the chat room loves your idea. So, um, Chris, Kristen, who's over on Facebook, says, uh, "Where she said, yes, AD, I'd love that uh, challenge." Um, Amber says, "I like, I like challenges." Christina says, "I would love that." So well, I would, I would love I to think, have you put it out to a vote, Mike, because yeah, we, yeah. you know, some po- folks can't make the. The recording, that's awesome um, to hear, but I would like to hear from everybody. And um, if that's a thing, you can let me know and I, I and I will pull from my – I have a huge list of challenges that we did. Um, so, yeah, and there's a lot of different things. Like we can do processing challenges too, um, which are really cool where I upload a raw file – and everybody gets to really go nuts on these oh, raw files cool. yeah. and we can look at them. Yeah. And that can be like an auxiliary challenge. Like you can submit your photo and we can do a, a processing challenge as well. So anyways, we, I don't want to go too long here. I just wanted to put that out there. So yeah, we, we did that a few years back uh, where we did some, some editing challenges. And I think maybe it's time to do that again. You know, sure. some of these things, you know, need to be recycled through or try something different. You know, you keep doing the same thing and it gets a little stale. So Yes, I'm up for some changes and some different stuff. Cool. Whatever they want to try, I'm game to uh, put in the time for it. So Awesome. Very cool. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to go over five of the images that were submitted, AD. So if, if, cool. you, if you're watching us live and we don't do one, if you submitted more than one, because when it's an open, you can submit two. And right. you go, wait, why'd they pick that one? Well, watch show 27 when we do that one. We may, we may cover it then. So tonight it's going to be five of them. So you ready for the first one, AD? Absolutely. All right. Uh, Let's see if I get this. There we go. So the first one up is from Kristen Lee Anderson. Yes. And this is is one of the two that she took of a a new old car. (laughs) She, so the other one I think had the mirror in it. This one, she says she loves the look of the taillight. Um, They have a style. They have... The style they have is one of their own, one of their own, and I simply love it. So this, this, and again, this is a beginners group, and she was taking this for the outdoor theme. Absolutely, and Kristen, um, please get a hold of me after this if you want to uh, go on a car journey. I have uh, this weird kind of thing with old cars and um, their. I don't know. They did. They just did things. They all cars today almost look the same, even though they don't. And there's little nuances. Um, everything, you know, they just didn't do it like they used to do it. They used to just these tail fins and mm-hmm. these things look like they could fly. They were standing still, and I totally have that same feeling. And I'm not like a big vintage car nut or anything, but I, I really love the style that went into uh, these old vehicles. So I am totally with her on. Um, this in the tail lights, yeah. I mean, you don't see tail lights like that. I mean, it's just that's just crazy. Um, but it did. It looked like this thing it looked like it was out of the future, you know. And and that was what was cool about it. Uh, I haven't actually. Um, I want to talk about um, doing an edit on this photo and showing Kristen some things that I think would help this photo kind of uh, uh, kick it up a notch. But let's do. Let's look at both photos first, and then we'll come back to this. Okay. Okay. Um, and as far as a critique goes on the image, I think she did well with the light, and I love the bokeh in the background. I love that one tail light is is kind of in focus and one is not. I probably would have shot this with more of a leading line or a trailing line in this, where uh, the tail light was kind of in the. Uh, it was more of in a landscape shot and there was more of an angle to the bumper so that maybe the, 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 I saw more of the bumper in the second taillight uh, in the background uh, across a, uh, a landscape sort of uh, way to go. But there's some things I want to show her with a portrait version of this that she might not know. And since it's in the beginner group, we got, I want to do a, a quick edit, which we have done before uh, on this. And I've got it all set up and ready to go. So, but let's look at the other photo and talk about that a little bit. Is In, that cool? Tonight? You want to look at it now? 
Yeah, yeah. We can go to the next photo and then I'll show Kristen. We'll go back and, and we'll look at this one and we'll do the edit before we go on to the regular group. Is that cool? Okay. Yeah, if I could say the only the, – one of the things that I noticed here, a little thing I would have done, and you could probably have done this fairly easy, is that tire that's in the – that you could see out there. Yeah, actually, in part of the edit that I'm going to show you, it's going to be under a minute. Okay. And I'm going to – that's one of the things that we'll address, and I'll – I want to show her how fast it is and how easy it is okay. to do, you know, to take care of things like that. So, yeah, I think that'll be interesting for everybody to see. Okay. So you want me to go to the flowers or to her? Other yeah. Image? Yeah. Let's go to the next one in the beginner one, and then we'll okay. come back and do the edit here before we okay. start the regular group. Yeah. So the next one up is from Nancy Smith. And let's see. Nancy says the promise of spring. Yes. Nancy's um, doing something a little different here. Mm -hmm. She's she's uh, this is branching out a little bit. I think this is, goes to part of the thing we talk about every week about being creative. Um, flowers are difficult. Um, yes, without, I'm not too doing well. <laughs> yeah, um, and flowers. Uh, the thing with them for me, uh, I go out in the garden all the time. Now we've moved to a new place, and I don't have that garden anymore. Hopefully, we're going to uh, get get something going. We're working on that a little bit. But flowers generally, um, we usually like to see in groups of odd numbers uh, with flowers. And I know that's weird, but um, like anytime we're looking at uh, where we have flowers in the image, we usually want an odd number. So here we have four of the purple flowers and then a couple of the yellow flowers in the background kind of photobombing a little bit. Um, it's very hard to frame them out. I would tell Nancy that if you want to try some different things and, and try to help frame the flowers a little bit more, um, try shooting late in the day and using a bounce flash, which is uh, a lot of people don't think about this. They think hmm. they're going outside. They're like, well, I'm going outside and I'm just going to shoot in the daylight, which is nice. And you can do some things with that. Um, but in order to separate the background from the foreground a little bit and kind of make your subject pop a little bit more, experiment a little bit with later day shooting and using a flash um, to bounce uh, the flash off maybe a white card or something where it's not direct, but just so it lights up the area or the flower itself. Mm -hmm. um, it, a ring flash is good. And for darkens that as the well. background. It darkens the background, yeah, and it kind of takes a little – this image is beautiful and the colors are beautiful, but it's very um, – and it, don't take this the wrong way, Nancy, but it's what I call noisy, which is there's a lot of things in the image competing with that flower that you kind of have targeted in the middle – um, that's it, that's right there, you know, where your focal point is at. You've got all this other stuff kind of, uh, you know, going on. You've got a kind of bokeh out flower that's in front of it a little bit. That's got some color dotted in it. So that's kind of calling for attention. You've got some blades of grass that are reaching out to you. They're kind of calling for attention. So you've got all this stuff going on. There's another bud that's uh, up the, the, uh, the upper left that's yeah. in focus. All of that stuff is – it's so hard um, and I always like going into the garden. It was funny because you like you're a landscape photographer, and no one ever received my photos of flowers, and I have thousands of photos <laughs> of flowers. But it was always a super challenge to get them framed properly and get a good composition. That's very difficult because you got to get the angle, you got to get the light, you got to get the number. Uh, you know, right. in in the way that they lay. Sometimes you got to move flowers around and do this and, and that sort of thing. So I think it's great that she's that she's doing this, and I hope she does more of it. Um, and I do, and don't, and I love her. I love her for not being afraid to show. I think that's the 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 thing that I think is important with anybody who submits to a contest or a, uh, you know, I don't, we don't even call this a contest, a review. Yeah. Um, it's really great to, that you're willing to put out. That you know, this is this is me in the raw. And, you know, Nancy by no means is a beginner, I don't think. Um, and she, right. but she submitted to the beginner group because this is something new for her. Um, I haven't seen too much of this from her, so uh, I I want to see more and keep practicing at it, Nancy. It's very difficult, trust me. I've, I've done it for years and years and years, and I still can't do what I see guys like Alan Shapiro and. And, uh, and Janice Sullivan, we've talked about these right. folks uh, before, um, or Scott, even Scott Norris, who can take, you know, uh, a, yeah. you know a, a simple shot and make this wonderful piece of art out of it, which um, I'm st I still long to learn how to do that. So 
I still practice. I still do it all the time. And it's, it's wonderful to see that from Nancy for sure. So keep at it, Nancy. Um, Thanks. love to see it. Thanks, Nancy. All right. Yeah. What do you want to do? Yeah. Now? You want to do a quick edit? Yeah. 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 Let's, let's just, uh, I'll screen share her for you, Mike. I, I'm going to try this. Um, I've got it set. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to screen share now. Here we go. Boom. You should be seeing, uh, you tell me if you see the, I do. the Photoshop. Hey, Photoshop is, is doing. So I just wanted to show, um, Kristen, how quick we can kind of, I don't want to say clean up this image, but I really want to say simplify the image so that what she really, what really took her attention in this was the taillight. So we can just make that taillight stand out. And these are super simple edits. I'm just going to quickly use the heel tool over here, which is a spot healing brush. Um, if you hover over the new uh, Photoshop, it actually does a little tutorial and tells you how to do it. Yeah. I know it's off the screen there a little bit, but um, it's J on the keyboard to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you can use the bracket keys to make the, the thing here a little bit bigger and smaller. And I just want to show you how fast. One of the things here is that this little piece of molding is kind of distracting. So I would just get rid of that just like that. Um, no offense to your your uh, your watermark but i'm going to remove it just for now because just this is just for sure explanation purposes so we're just going to do that and then there's a little piece of molding up here i'm going to get rid of that so i'm what i'm trying to do here is take the distractions out of the image we have a tire here mike talked about i'm just going to get rid of that just like that um so this is very fast very easy to do we got this weird looking shadow here now you'd think this would be really hard to get rid of but actually if you paint over it like that you get this weird stuff but then if you just tap click over all of that, you can go ahead and remove all that as well. And so really quick, you can kind of dress up this photo and get rid of a lot of the distractions. And then finally, what I would do is change the crop just ever so slightly. And the angle here, this this is kind, it's a little askew. Um, so in order to balance this a little bit better, I'm going to tilt this a little bit. I'm, I'm looking at the tree, which trees tend to grow straight up and down for the most part. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at the line in the tree for my vertical. And I'm also looking at this is a kind of pyramid or a triangle shape here to just change the overall. And there you go. That would be all I would do to this image. But you noticed I removed the distractions really quickly. I removed that tire. I straightened up the image a little bit now. And now you've got a good basis. If you want to go creatively nuts with it at this point and tone it and do all this crazy stuff, you can't. Or You've removed the distractions now. It's just about that taillight, right? Yeah, You're not very seeing nice. all that other stuff going on. So I did want to show that um, as well. And we have one of Amber's photos that we're going to do a little later. So we'll go ahead and that's all I wanted to show you, Kristen. If you have any questions about that, you know, you can hit me up. Um, I'm going to stop sharing now, Mike. Here we go. All right. And boom. Well, you are on it, man. You're so I'm... good at that. <laughs> well, I got a little button. All right, we want to make that quick. We're going to move on to the regular group, right? Yes, we're about to move on to the regular group. Now I just need nice. to get, get ready. And the first one up from that group is going to be uh, Millen. Man, when I and saw this, I didn't think Millen. I didn't. <laughs> Millen, that's the utmost com uh, compliment, by the way, I want to tell you. And it, now we're into the regular group, and the theme there was Dream. So yes. this is Millen, and he this is actually his eye. He took a close-up of, of his eye. Um, and then added some some color bokeh. Yeah, I absolutely love this. I think this is this is Millen. Every time he he does he like takes these challenges and he just runs like every yeah. single time he shows up. Uh, and his his work he's he's just expanded. You look at go back and look at Millen's. We've talked about that before. You know, we should do like yeah. a before and after. Or, yeah. yeah, I mean, um, and, and this is fantastic. He took and put the bokeh, and then he he he's thinking. He's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I'm thinking. And we're going to talk about this a little bit um, with uh, Amber's photo. He thought, well, if you if I want to make this real, if I want to sell what I call selling the the image, he put the reflection in the eye and he made it small. And he kind of, you know, faded it in. So it just was in the reflection. But I just excellent work. It's just great. Yeah. Good yeah. Job. And no, it he, he, it, he tried no matter what the challenge is, what the contest uh, yep. theme is. He he always tries. Yes. Yeah. And he did a great and job. Does, here. I good. think it really does. Um, this this image does have that dreaming, you know, it just the, the colored lights and the, the look up. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, man. Nice job, Millen. Very cool. Thanks, Millen. 
All right. You ready for um, the next one? Yeah. Let's talk about Amber's image here. All right. Let's talk about Amber's image here. And this actually was the winner for the month. Absolutely. Yeah. We, um, I think, uh, you know, I, I had coached Amber a little bit on this image. I think, um, she had, um, posted it and I, I saw the propeller a little bit. Um, and I purposefully did not go beyond that because I knew that, you know, this was coming up and what she was doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I love this image. I love, she's done a couple of these, I think, uh, with the dogs and, and, and she had herself in a, she had herself in a uh, jar before, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And so I wanted to kind of do a little, another quick demonstration with Amber's image to give her some ideas because she's a very uh, easy to spark imagination and she takes this sort of stuff very well. And she, she also runs with it like Millen does. Um, So I I had a little, uh, a little thing that I did with her image. I actually did this, believe it or not, Amber, uh, it has nothing to do with talent or anything, but I did this just a few minutes before Mike and I talk to each other. So it's going to be very quick okay. and it's not going to be anything elaborate, but I did want to uh, show you another screen share as well. Mike, so let me do that awesome. um, and make these quick as possible. I love this image. I love this image too. Me too. Yep. All right. So you should have some I Adobe Photoshop goodness going on. All right. So you can see there's a bunch of layers over here on the side. It's kind of a little hard to see. Let me see if I can bring that over a little bit. Can you see that? Is that a little better? That's 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 better. better, Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at it on the screen now. So I did a bunch of stuff here, Amber, and I'm not going to go too deep into this about what I did. Um, But you had a wonderful image started here, and I just wanted to give you some kind of thoughts on it um, to help kind of push it over the edge a little bit. One of the things I did is I actually took the birds out. Um, It's they're kind of distracting to me. Um, I, I get what you're going for, but the one bird in the upper right kind of just keeps, I keep looking at that thing going like, I, I want to look at the dog in the plane. Really, <laughs> It's the greatest part of this. Well, I think it's, she's probably adding it to make it more believable. He's in the sky. I, yeah, but I think it's pretty believable, yeah. man. I think, I think her composition or her compositing work was already there. That's, okay. I guess, what I'm trying to say. It's not more about the birds as is so much about the fact that she did a great job with the compositing that I don't need the birds to sell me. It, it really looks great. She did a great job. Um, the things I, w- I did to the image were, first thing I did was I actually removed everything out of the image. <laughs> <laughs> so I removed your dog. <laughs> Sorry. Uh-oh. Um, and then He's I motion back. blurred. Yeah, he's coming back. Um, I motion blurred the background just a little bit. I wanted to add a little bit of movement to those clouds. I want to make sure that there's they're still noticeable as clouds. So I just used the filter and then I went to blur and then motion blur to get that. And I just uh, set it to a um, horizontal motion motion blur. So we got that going. So it looks like the clouds are kind of moving, right? That gives a, a sense of speed to it. Okay. Um, and so then I took the dog. And there's your dog. And I separated him from the background. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's some new tools in Photoshop in the the quick selection tool, which is called Select Subject. This thing is pretty amazing. And I'm not going to do the whole thing right now, but I just want to show you. Go back to your background, Select Subject. If I click on any subject, it just outlines it like a nut. Dang, that's good. Like, like, yeah, I was like, oh, we'll take this and we'll take that and maybe the dog and that. So I'm not actually like normally you'd have to draw all around this, but this thing is just nailing it. I mean, so that's what I did to cut your uh, cut your plane out. I did this. I clicked on it a few times and then I just did. Um, let me get the rest of it here. OK, there it is. All pretty much all of it. There we go. I think I got everything. And I just did a control or command C and then a, a control or command V. And then we have it on its own layer. So there I, I separated it. Now you would normally, oh, his eye's gone. Um, you would normally just do this when you're compositing. So that's, I, I just did this to reverse engineer your mm-hmm. image. So, so we went and cut that out. And then I moved, is Loki, Loki's the dog's name? Yeah, Loki. Yep. Yep. I moved Loki over here. And I also changed Loki's scarf because We want to make it believable that wind is going by. And the the way the image was before for me, here's the before and the after. We don't get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, It kind of looks like the the plane might be falling through the air. So I didn't want Loki to be in danger. We want Loki to be having fun here. So so what I did is I just made the scarf uh, drag out. And I used the liquify tool to Uh do that. So that's up here under filter. And then liquify and it allows you to – 
move and stretch things out. And again, you can do that on your own. And then I moved Loki over. So I moved Loki over to here. And you notice I moved Loki into the lower thirds. And, and that was just for the composition. Um, I want to give all that negative space the balancing between Loki and the negative space. So that's what we use all of this space over here to the right. Um, and sometimes, you know, I, I, a lot of times I would have like put um, the dog and everything to the, to the right. We're used to putting it on the right. Yeah. But this, we were signifying motion. So to make it believable that this dog was flying by me and I just captured it, putting it in the left gives it a sense that it's moving through the scene. Yeah. So it's a little bit different because it's a moving uh, a moving object. And then I just added a motion trail to that. So I've got now this motion trail and it's on its own layer. So I can actually uh, I can add Change, or subtract yeah. as much of that as I want um, uh, using opacity. So if I want less of the motion layer, I can do it. I probably would tame that quite a bit mm -hmm. so that it's it's there. And and that was it. That's all. I, that's all I was. I wanted to give her. She had. She was learned like how to do the motion with the propeller and all this kind of stuff. And and this was all things that I just wanted to kind of show her so she could add to the realism of what she had created here. And it was a really fast edit job. So I apologize for. And uh, once you a lot added of it. that motion trail, that because when you hand it off to the lower uh, left, it's right? Yeah, like, that scene that feels a little odd. Once you add the motion trail, it now makes it. You know, it doesn't feel off when it's to the left. Right. Because it because now it, it's essentially it it's actually drawing across yeah, the lower half exactly. of the image. So so we're using all of that space. So anyways, Amber, I just wanted to give you those ideas. I know you're like diving deep into this creative stuff, and I just wanted to share uh that with you because I love doing this stuff. I could edit other people's images and have fun <laughs> with this and never touch my camera again because I just I love having fun with it. So all right, let's move on to the last image, Mike. I don't want to tear up too no, much that was here, so. that was cool thanks for that ad yeah all right and the last image for tonight is going to be from oh i gotta get my stuff ready where am i at <laughs> there it is from christina oh yeah, I gotta yeah, hit the yeah. Button. christina binge doggy cute little puppy so another another dog another cute puppy <laughs> dog it, yes and, and it says dreaming of chasing ducks maybe <laughs> so <laughs> and and she's like i don't know if it's a he or she but the dog's laying on a duck yeah and i, I that's great i think that the having it slightly bokeh it out doesn't like it doesn't steal from the image at all we're really focused on uh the face uh of the pooch which is awesome um, I'm not sure if it really signifies dreaming as much. Um, if we could have got the the puppy with the eyes closed, maybe um, in in dreaming, mm -hmm. that that might have sold it a little bit more. Um, of course, again, the payoff right is you got to sit there until your dog falls asleep. <laughs> That's <laughs> or it. blinks and, or blinks, and chances are they're not going to do it for you. So not while you're staring um, at them. You, Right, that's how that works out. But but yeah, I, I think it's a dreamy kind of image. I like the softness of the image. So I think it still falls within the category quite nicely. And it's it's well done as usual. Christina always submits like beautiful images. Um, and she has such fun with this dog. It's ridiculous. And uh, I think pretty much um, one of the things that I've talked about before, and I always like – if you guys haven't figured it out by now, I really push fundamentals with everybody. So um, the reason why I repeat a lot of things is because it's the basic fundamentals. And when I don't see fundamentals in shots, um, sometimes we forget about those mm -hmm. and we need to bring them kind of rein them back in and then we get our mojo back sort of thing. And I think one of the things that I, I like to tell everybody to always do is if you have a subject like you have a dog or you have a garden or you have – a park nearby. It doesn't matter what it is, but don't just go shoot it once and, 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 and you know, work on those images. You got to go back and go back and go yeah. back. And we've talked about it before, Mike, um, the people who come away with the, you know, the, the national park photos that are the award winners are the people who live nearby, right? Cause they go all the time. Right. Yep. They're right there. Um, so if you have something like, you know, this, this beautiful dog, make it your subject. Follow it around with a camera all day long. I mean, shoot you know, it a that's, bunch. right. And, and, shoot it a bunch. Yeah. And she does that. And it, and it shows in the images because the images are amazing every time. So yeah. I went, I went on a trip, um, back in April 
that I've gone to those places for my work. I've gone there a bunch of times. And the struggle I still have, and I, I, I don't know that this is what Christine or anybody else has, but I'm sure there's other photographers who have this, is the scene is beautiful. You've seen the scene a, a ton of times. But I have a patience problem. I need to slow down and spend some time there because what I'm wanting to do is, hey, let's get, and I don't have the skill to do this. This is a problem. You know, you, you may be able to walk on it, AD, and within a very short amount of time, figure out your composition, figure out what you want to do, bang it out and, and move on. For me, that my skill level is not there and I need to, to compensate some of that. I'll never compensate all of it, but compensate some of that by slowing down and spending more time with it. And, yeah, and I'll yeah. I'll tell you some things that'll help you with that, Mike, and maybe this will help other people too. Um, one of the things that helps me is to uh, remember those fundamentals. So th when I'm when I come upon a scene like that, the very first thing I will do is I will not use the the LCD screen on my camera ever. Okay. I will put my face in the viewfinder, and there's a reason for that. Um, looking at the LCD, there is a world around you that is uh, that is constantly doing yeah. things while you're looking at that screen, and you're not really focusing. But when you close one eye and you look through the viewfinder, you are now focused on mm -hmm. your scene. So you're really kind of seeing that um, that you're closed into that little box. You have tunnel vision at that point, and when you do that, um, then you take and you can see what's there. You can move your camera around. You can find your basic composition. This is the very first thing I do is I go, okay, let's put the horizon in the lower thirds. Let's just start there. Yeah. And I'll take a picture. And I'll be like, okay, um, hmm, what else can I do with this? And that's what starts it. Hmm. That's what starts the, the, the creative juices going. I find it if I – try to stare at a scene and then pick up my camera and shoot it. It just yeah, doesn't yeah. work. It doesn't work that way. It, it, I'm then I'm, then I'm like, Oh, setting. And what am I? And then by, by that point, it's like, no, I you got to get right in, in the camera, get right in the viewfinder, get this. eye. you know, some people shoot with this eye open or closed. I usually shoot with it closed and I'll just get in the viewfinder only. And that's that, you know, tiny world in there. Yeah. And, and now you don't have any distractions. That's good. And, idea. and yeah, and then I'll look at my settings because they're in there too. You can see them. Um, you, you know, you kind of get. You're not doing this on the back thing where I can see. You know, um, I right like right now I can see chat. I can see a dog. I can see pictures. <laughs> you know, I'm not paying attention. But if I do this, I'm in here. If, I'm inside. Yeah, um, focused. And I'm locked. Yeah. So I think that if you guys try that, um, that, that'll that help you a lot. I know a lot of people like to use the LCD. Um, remember, too, I, I tell a lot of people this. Um, if you wear glasses like I do, and mm -hmm. I wear – I have transition lenses because um, I'm old. Um, but Me too. when I go out and shoot, um, sometimes I will shoot without my, my, my glasses on. There's a huge difference with my glasses to the viewfinder and without them because of my vision – but there's a little dial on every camera that's right over here on the side near your viewfinder. And I always tell people, cover up your lens so that it's dark. So put your lens cap on. Decide if you're going to shoot. Now, you, you would do this before you go on your shoot. Um, but if you're going to shoot with your glasses off, take your glasses off, put your lens cap on, look in your viewfinder, and turn that dial until the writing around the viewfinder, just the, the data that shows up in there, the f-stop and all right. that, is perfectly tack sharp. Can you, and you'll be able to, can you compensate enough even if your eyes are bad? Absolutely. Yeah, diopters move a whole lot. Hmm. They're, they do, they'll, they'll cover even the worst vision. So, so the, the, the swing on them is, is quite a bit. And so I'm going to try, try that as soon as we're done. Yeah, and cover this up and then get that focus on those letters inside there perfectly. And then then you'll see when you go to take the photo how well, how comfortable you are with nailing the focus and seeing the image now because your eyes aren't trying to 
kind of focus to the viewfinder. I know a lot of people don't use their viewfinder because they're like, well, I can't really, I don't see clearly through it. Mm-hmm. And and they, a lot of people don't know. I, I worked with a guy who, who uh, it was shooting from the seventies to, to now. Yeah. And he did not know that the diopter did that. And he goes, well, what I do is, is I, I focus the camera on an image and then I use the diopter to make it a little clearer. And I'm like, no, you don't want to see anything through here. You want just the the letters around the outside because then you're double focusing. You're doing right. focus you, here. You may it, give right. yourself a false focus. Exactly. So a lot of people, you know, once they do that, they're like, wow, my camera's really clear. <laughs> like because you can – and I do it quite often because your eyes change, right? right I mean right. and if you, have, if you have transitions like I do, it's very difficult to find the line on there – to get it just right. A lot of times I'll just take my glasses off and I'll set my diopter and then I'm, I'm much more comfortable. Of course, I can't see anything else when I'm not in the viewfinder, <laughs> but it forces me to get my face on my camera. That's true. More. If I took my glasses off, the only way I'd be able to see the scene is by through there. You can also, if you're not comfortable with that, you can also get a device like this. So I, I hmm. do, didn't even know we we're going to talk about this, like but periscope. I do have it on my desk because, yeah, it's like a periscope. What it is, is you can find these are vintage. You probably won't find a new one anywhere, but you might be able to. It's got a little clip, and it actually clips on to your viewfinder, just like so. Holy crap. And now you can just do this. Very comfortable. Or you can do this. Like this. Huh. And I can see right through there. And there's a focus on this. So remember, diopter and this now, you've got to get it all clear. But you can get these these uh, simple little things if you don't like, you know, staring at you don't like your face prints all over the side of your camera or whatever. So that's cool. Um, th- yeah. Um, but I would highly suggest that the, the, the LCD is great for reviewing a photo or zooming in mm-hmm. and looking at stuff afterwards. But I never take a photo by looking at the LCD. I just... I can't do it. It I never am happy. I always miss focus. Even though I think I'm seeing it in focus, I really don't. I gotta get inside that viewfinder to really get uh get that. Uh Gary in chat says, I have a piece of plastic at the shape of a thirty five millimeter negative. I just hold it up and try and find a composition. Right. And so you've probably seen this go on. Yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Right. Everybody's seen guys do this, girls do this, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I can never movie, do that movie well. Movie people, right? Yeah, and so that that's basically what they're doing. They're framing out the photo so mm-hmm. that they're what they're doing with their hands though is blocking out distraction. They're blocking it out to frame it, and so that and I just use my viewfinder. That's just you know, and and it's tough because you got different focal lengths. You might not have the right lens on there. You might not be feeling it. You just got to, you know, it takes practice. You got to get the right lens on there. And um, a lot of times when I'm traveling, I'll actually use lenses that are very versatile. Like I have a, an 18 or a, let's see, it's 28 to 90 millimeter. I've got uh, 16 to 35 that I use a lot. The 24 to 70 is a very popular mm-hmm. lens um, that gives you quite a bit of range um, so that you can zoom in and out. Um, and they and remember, landscape lenses don't have to. Um, in most cases, we're shooting like landscapes with uh, an f/8 or or more right. to get the the whole focus in. So you don't need like a lens that's you know 2.8 to to shoot a landscape. Um, you, you can even shoot landscape with a 70 to 200. You sure can. Yeah. I, in fact, if you go out west, I highly suggest that's the only lens you take with you because everything is so big and expansive exactly, out there yeah. that a 16 to 35, you know, mountains come out like <laughs> this big. I mean, you're like, what? I was standing right next. It was huge. Yeah, you lose the majesty of everything. Yeah, you don't see it. Um, and I saw a really cool edit by my buddy Trey Ratcliffe the other day where he took an image of a mountain uh, scene with a lake – and he took just the upper half with the mountains, and because the uh, wide-angle lens tends to compress everything, he actually took just the upper half of the mountains and stretched them up a little bit mm-hmm. on the uh, in Photoshop, and it made it look like the mountains. It brought back their majesty. It huh. really just made, yeah. I haven't. I was seen interested. That. I've never tried that before. I'm like, yeah. well, I have to try that next time I'm out there. So, <laughs> but yeah. Cool. Well, hey, man, great images this yep. week, everybody. That was that was a lot of fun. Yep. Thank you, everybody, for entering. We'll do the rest of the March images 
uh, for show 27 when we do that one. Uh, so we're going to wrap up. Before we do, I want to mention, if you want to get in touch with AD, go over to, let me bring that up, his website, the explorographer.com. Go over there, and at the bottom of probably every page is all the places you can follow AD right there. Don't forget he has, I was going to page up. I don't have my keyboard right here. Um, he also has a, a photo tools store there, which is right here. And I noticed something new the other day. Maybe it's always yes. been here, and I just didn't notice it. But you even have some books. I do have a couple of ebooks out there. I want to do a couple of more. It's uh, yeah. something I really like to do. But yeah, um, there were just early projects that I worked on, and um, they're nothing special. <laughs> they really aren't. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to mention them because all the times I've gone there, I've never actually looked at them until oh, uh, last week or something like that. I saw what. What are these? I didn't even looked at these. So, you know, go around and look there. But also go over to uh, thecreators.com over on Patre Patreon. The, did I say it right? Thecreators.com. Yes, did I get you there? Yep. On Patreon. Yep. And you're bringing back on Monday, yep. you're bringing back the uh, live stream Monday. Yes. We'll be, we're continuing with Luminar, which yes. we, we're going to be talking about masking and, and all sorts of stuff. And, man, I don't know if you, Mike, if you've downloaded the latest version of it. I did two days ago. Is that the latest? Yeah. Have you yeah. played with it? I have not. No. So I'm going to be watching. I'm going to watch Monday. Maybe you'll talk about it. Yeah. It's, wow. They've, it's just, as far as like, because I have the Mac version and I have okay. the PC version both. And the PC version would make my poor computer just choke to death every time I used it. And while it, while it worked and it was functioning, it was a big, huge CPU hog. And I don't know what they've done, but man, it's flying now. So Cool. Well, that is tomorrow. Um, yeah, tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern. Is that right? 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time. I think we're on EDT now. I don't know. I yeah. can't ever keep it straight. But yeah, 8.30. Um, I kind of try to do it for the West Coast people and East Coast. Mm -hmm. I know it seems like it's late on a Monday, but um, yeah, you um, can come on over and hang out and, and check it out. And to, to watch that, we do have to be a what do you a Patreon, right? A one dollar subscriber $1 gets you subscriber. in the door for yes. everything. So it's one dollar a month. You can start it and stop it anytime you like. You can even refuse to pay it when it comes <laughs> by, and I don't even kick you out if you refuse to pay. How do you like that? So for you pay $1. it once you're in. I, I don't know if I should tell everybody this, but no. seriously, I, you know, nobody's ever done this to me, but. Um, I've had people miss a payment. And I'm just like, whatever. It happens to everybody. I don't care. Well, tomorrow night, I'm over, happy to have people in the community. So <laughs> tomorrow night, over on Patreon, uh, thecreators.com. And there's, a, is there a link to that also on your on your webpage? To the creators, yes, yeah. it's under the Learn Photography um, headline. If you guys want to contact me directly, if you like. AD, I want to work mm -hmm. with you. I want to Me get too. a personal critique, uh, whatever. Um, if you do the who is AD, there's a thing in at the bottom, a contract form that you can uh, that you can contact me directly on my website. So, um, so yeah, just go to who is AD at the top there, Mike, oh, and the top. got a big ugly picture of me. Who is AD uh, in yep. there? Yeah, that, that's it. And then if you scroll to the bottom of that, you get a big contact form that you can. There we go, right yeah, there. Yeah, and all the past shows. Um, all if you go up a little bit, all the past shows that we've done are in there somewhere. You scroll, scroll and I, I keep. Holy crap! Yeah. You got a bunch here. Yeah, yeah, and it's so it's our review shows. It's all the appearances I've done. Whenever I've been on the show, they're all in there, so you can go. Hang Very out nice. Check those out. All right. Thanks, AD. Thank you guys for coming out. We're going to head into the post show here in just a minute. And we'll be back. Maybe I don't we'll have to talk about it afterwards about when show 27 is be, but um, where our original goal was every other week, but we'll 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 talk about that later. So until next show, keep shooting. Good night, everybody. Bye.